Hello? Mr. Purcell? You're right handed, you're thieving out. Yes, you muggers. They'd like it, do you, when you get a touch of her own medicine? Scotty's wearing the old school tie. Why did you steal that, you thieving scoundrel? No, if you just let me explain, Mr. Purcell. You know me? That I am an old Chestonian. It's Scott, it's Ridley. Ah, that's right, yes. I remember you. Always wetting yourself in class, weren't you, boy? No, that was a very long time ago. Piddly riddly! No, 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 if you I knew you'd never amount to anything. You were an unpleasant, whinging child, and you turned into an unpleasant, whinging adult. No, hold on! Is this what you do for a living? Break into pensioners' houses? Yes, well, I am the headmaster of your old school. Oh, this is just a sideline, is it? Keeping your hand in between bank robberies. You're the what? I, I am the new headmaster of Churston County High. Really? Yes. Oh, well done, Ridley. I always knew you'd had it in you. No, oh, can I get you anything? Tea, brandy, a brace of aspirin. No, I'd merely called to pay my respects. I did not expect to be slugged with a sack of compost. It wasn't compost, it was rich peat. Oh, that's all very well. Uh, I'm so sorry. And if you don't want to be treated like a criminal, you shouldn't skulk around people's conservatories. Well, I did ring the front doorbell. Well, I wouldn't have heard that. I was in the garden shed, getting the rich peat. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must get on. Pass me that broom. Yes, certainly. It's always pleasant, renewing old acquaintances. Uh, yes. But the flower show is pressing. Yeah, quite. Good quite. day. Uh, good day. I'm sorry to... Tr no, 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 no. If you'll just bear with me, sir, uh, Mr. Purcell, the reason I called was to discuss speech day with you. Speech day? Uh, yes. Uh, as you know, this year marks the, uh, the bicentenary of the school, and we thought we would take the opportunity to launch an appeal for £100,000 to build and equip a new music room. Oh, most commendable. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, I thought that you, as Churston's greatest post-war headmaster, uh, would like to be among the first to contribute. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, <clears throat> uh, there you are, Ridley. Wish it could be more, but you know how it is, living on a fixed income. No, 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 sir. Every little helps. Is, uh, is, your, is your daughter at home? You know Belinda? Well, I haven't had the pleasure personally, but I have admired her organ playing in church on Sundays. Bom, 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 You're bom, a Christian! Bom, bom. Oh. One of a dwindling band. Excellent. Excellent. Come on in and sit down. Um, Belinda's gone to the shops. Uh, bakers and fishmongers, I think. Oh, yes, yes, I see. <laughs> Loaves and fishes, eh? Quite. One needs a miracle to live on a pension these days. Ah, uh, well, mustum transit, comid tempus. Oh, eh? very good. Do sit down. Oh, oh, thank you. I'm back. Ah. Oh, ah. sorry. This is my daughter, Belinda. Bells is Piddly, uh, Mr. Ridley. Sorry? Uh, Sam, actually. Uh, Piddly's just a nickname. You know what boys are. Just about. Uh, Ridley was hoping to meet you. He's uh, what you might call a fan of yours. Daddy. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he asks you out. Eh, Ridley? Uh, uh, if he does, I'd go. You're not getting any younger, and he is in pensionable employment. Oh. Mm. I need some skins. Beg pardon, sir? Skins. You know, fag papers. Mm, right you are, sir. Would you like orange, blue, or licorice? Oh, haven't you got any pineapple ones? Behave yourself, Len. All right, I'll, uh, I'll have a dozen packets of licorice papers. Right you are, sir. What kind of rolling tobacco would sir prefer? Tobacco? No. Don't smoke. But if you don't smoke... Boom. 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 He sticks them together and lines cake tins with them. We do sell greaseproof paper, sir. <laughs> I'll have all these. Anything else, sir? Well, there isn't anything else. Eh? Uh, we do have a special line in royal wedding souvenirs. Cool. No. That'll be, um... Name, wallet. Yeah, there you go. One, two, three, four. All right? Keep the change. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, morning, Mr. B. Ah, oh, doctor. Didn't know your sort went out in the daylight. Morning, Mr. Beckett. Good morning, sir. Hello, Nigel. Mr. Beckett, this ain't big enough for a boat, of you? 
country life, please? I'm afraid Mr. Cochrane had the last one, sir. The field? Uh, ditto, sir. Well, what about the blasted exchange and mart? I'm afraid... I know what you're going to say. Cochrane's got it. Oh, no, sir. On strike. Oi, Chief, I suppose you'd like to do me a favour. Your instinct is correct. Oh, fair enough. No sweat. I just thought you might tell Belinda I've got that new video film she wanted to see. If she fancied popping over, you know, maybe Over tonight. my dead body. I can just imagine the sort of sordid picture to which you'd subject my daughter. Well, it's only close encounters. Close encounters? I knew it. Filth! Let me tell you here and now <laughs> that Belinda will not be cycling over to your seraglio this evening because she is attending a symphony concert in Dorking. Wow! And what's more, she's going with a man. And those are mine. No, of course I don't mind. I wouldn't have offered otherwise. Uh, uh, as long as your father won't object. Well, Daddy's not an ogre, you know. He did hit me over the head. Oh, yes. Well, that's just his way of breaking the ice. Oh. Hello, Daddy. Enjoyable concert. Oh, good evening, sir. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Very, thank you. Well, the strings were a little scratchy during the second movement of the handle. Good, but good. But otherwise... Uh, um, I was just about to make a cup of coffee. I presume you'd like a cup. No, no, no. It's far too late for me. I'll just leave you two young things to your own devices. Mm. No, you're a gentleman, Ridley. <clears throat> um, why don't you just make yourself comfortable and I'll go and put the kettle on? No, don't go, Belinda. This... This is something I've been meaning to ask you all night. <clears throat> all during the uh, interval, and uh, then again in the wine bar, and all the way back here, I, I've been wondering just how to frame this question. Um, it's up the stairs, second door on the right. Oh. No, 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 but I'm serious. I'm serious about what? You can't possibly be about to ask. You can't possibly be about to ask me. <laughs> That's ridiculous. We only met this morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, well, uh, be that as it may, I, I already feel I know you very well. I'm normally um, quite shy with uh, girls, uh, with women, uh, it's, it's ladies, and... Uh, rather. But I, I, I feel you to be kind and understanding. So I, I'm, I'm just going to and come right out with it. Daddy, where are you when I need you? Come on, Nigel, you can do better than that. I don't want to. Men never grow up, do they? You've been sulking all morning. Don't tell me you're jealous. Why should I be jealous of a middle-aged Wally who wears flared trousers? Anyway, it was a rotten concert. You followed me? No, it was a complete coincidence. He must be a right piece of angel cake if your dad approves of him. Sam is very sweet. Oh, yuck. You know, he popped the question last night. He what? The pushy little Herbert? Well, not the question. A question. Oh, no, don't fart about, Belinda. What, you mean you're considering marrying this Burke? Oh, that's not what he wanted. Oh, well, he's got a nerve trying it on. Well, you trying on our first date. Yeah, but I'm a rock star. He's a school teacher. He's supposed to set an example. Oh, calm down, Nigel. No, well, I won't be sending my kids to his school. Sam got nothing except a cup of milky coffee, and he spilt that. Well, then, what was he after? He wanted me for your body. He what? <laughs> Sam wants to meet you. What for, a jewel? Actually, he just wants to ask you a favour. Well, what's wrong with him ringing up the house like anybody else? Well, he did, but Lem answered. So? Well, Lem told us to go away and spend a penny, or words to that effect. Well, he got off lightly. Lem usually tells strangers to piss off. Done very well for himself, in point of fact. Headmaster of a respectable boys' school, and barely 40. Why did you call him Piddly? You know how it is with nicknames? Because he did have to leave his seat three times during the concert. Teachers have very generous pension facilities nowadays, Belinda. I suppose it was a rather unfortunate choice of programme. Handles water music. I don't expect Cochrane's made any provision for his old age. Mindless beatnik. Nigel is a multi-millionaire, Daddy. Today, perhaps. But has he ever considered the problems of inflation? You always taught me it was vulgar to talk about people's money. It's vulgar of Cochrane to have so much. 
I hope you'll be seeing Ridley again soon. Agreeable young fellow, pair off his collar. I suppose I'll see him on speech day. Well, it's not for a fortnight. Sure, I expect he'd be busy, what with raising all that money. Absolutely. In fact, his new music room is all he thinks about, Daddy. Well, it's understandable. I did his first year, new broom and all that. He wants to make an impression. He certainly does. That's why he asked me to introduce him to Nigel. Cochrane? What on earth would the headmaster of Churston County High want with that representative of the Great Unwashed? He wants him to be guest of honour on speech day, Daddy. <coughs> More coffee? <laughs> decided to leave school <clears throat> at 15 he was expelled look who's making this speech it was caught behind the bike sheds with a deputy head girl i was only wanting her chain in the nude didn't want to get me blazer dirty look, anyway if you're gonna heck on i'm just Go not on, gonna... Nigel, we were enjoying it right where was i leaving, leaving school, school at 15. 15. right at school at 15 with no qualifications just because I decided to leave school at 15 with no qualifications, bummed around Europe for three years, joined a rock and roll band and became a millionaire by the time I was 23, is no reason for you lot not to concentrate on passing your GCEs. <laughs> you won't get away with that load of cobblers. Oh, oh. Where start? I hate speaking in public. Funny, I didn't listen to that. Piddling Sam Ridley. Well, it's all in a good cause, Nigel. Well, what about this jacket? It enables you to contribute something to your adopted community. Yeah, and you aggravate Belinda's old man. Well, yeah, there is that, yeah. Well, you certainly succeeded on that score. He hasn't spoken to anyone since, not even his plants. I bet he's really got his go. That Nigel's doing the new school song. Actually, I haven't quite told him that yet. Well, what about this one? <laughs> Okay. Far be it from one who relinquished his headship so many years ago to dictate to the governess the manner in which young Ridley should run the school. But it has been brought to my attention that he has invited an ill-educated, ill-mannered lout as guest of honour on speech day. You don't mean some sort of left-wing politician? Worse than that. It's... I can hardly bring myself to voice the words. Our local rock and roll performer. You mean Nigel Cochrane? Alas, yes, I do. Oh, how exciting. My grandchildren are great fans of his. He used to belong to a group called the Graf Spey. They have all his recordings. Really? Of course, I'm very fond of the live album. Thank you, Mrs. Fortescue, but I suspect the rest of us are not quite so enthusiastic. On the contrary, we owe it to our boys to offer them a, a wholesome and respectable example. The speaker on speech. Jay should be someone who has attained some kind of academic distinction. Not a semi-literate teddy boy. Here, 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 here. If we do withdraw our invitation to Mr. Cochrane. Who can we find to replace him at such short notice? Well, far be it from me to push myself forward, but I like to think that I am not without a certain verbal facility. What my grandchildren would call plenty of bunny. Plenty of... That's a very decent offer, Mr Purcell. Mustn't let the side down. Well, then, we are all in agreement. No, no, I must protest. You are outnumbered, Mrs Fortescue. As always. Mm. You know, I can't... Now, play fair, Barbara. We ought to present Mr. Ridley with a united front. Oh, come, come, gentlemen. We must not fear the voice of dissent. Tolerance is the greatest of all virtues, as I shall point out in my speech. Uh, tolerance is the greatest of all virtues. Mm. We must hold the line for our most cherished traditions. No, principles. Cherished principles. And the traditions that made this school great. Uphold the virtues of hard work and self-reliance. As Dr. Johnson said... Talking to oneself is the first sign of insanity. Ah, Belle. Did Dr. Johnson really say that? No, I just said it about you. I wasn't talking to myself. I was just rolling a few choice phrases around the palate like uh, good wine. Daddy, I have to speak to you about speech day. I will not flinch in my opposition to Cochrane, Bell. In fact, I've just had a little power. Yes, I can see you've had company. Some of the school governors happened by. Oh, fortuitous. A little sherry, Belinda. Oh, thank you, Daddy. They were as appalled as I was. Ridley had invited your hoodlum friend to present the prizes. But it wasn't difficult to persuade them that he is not the sort of example 
to set the four-hour boys. I see. Of course, there was a little problem of his replacement. You? Well, the blessed believe, needs must. Dwarf de Seigneur, etc., etc. <laughs> I'm sure you'll do very well, Daddy. Thank you, Verena. You know, Riddle is quite well-meaning in his way, and in the fullness of time, he may make him all that adequate headmaster. I certainly wouldn't condemn a man for a congenital weakness the better. But he's not local. He doesn't understand how deeply felt are our traditions, just because we don't go on about them. Oh, no, of doesn't course mean we don't. We, we won't fight for them. And if Nigel Cochrane thinks he can take over our little town and turn our ways upside down, he's in for a surprise. I think we all are, Daddy. One, two, one, two. I see maths O level is not Duriger in Lem's line of business. I have heard him go up to four. I'm uh, sorry to trouble you, Mr. Cochrane, but uh, might I have a word about the music? Oh, sure. <coughs> oh, uh, Belinda's in charge of the dots. Uh, excuse me? I transcribe the music. Is there some problem? Well, I'm not sure. It, you see, it's it's this uh, marking at the top of the page. You see, we, we all know what uh, Dante means in Allegro non troppo, but what exactly is meant by Reggie? Uh, no, Squire, that's, uh, that's reggae. Reggae? <laughs> no, I'm afraid I'm none the wiser. Oh, I'll show you. Oh. Afternoon, Cochrane. Oh, are they? Everything all right? Yeah, fine. Hey, is that a motorboat? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Why do you ask? My dad had one of them. Oh, really? Hey, was, uh, was he a teacher? No. Bricklayer. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, would, you, would you care for a spot of school luncheon? What's on the menu? Uh, cream potatoes, cabbage, sausage toad, <laughs> uh, spotted dick. Uh, with custard. You shouldn't have put yourself out. Oh, no, no. We like to do something special for speech day. No, I'm all right, actually. I had a vitamin capsule before I come out. I'll tell you what I would like, though, if mm. it's all right. Uh, nice spot of Rosie Lee. Uh, ro Rosie Lee, um, uh, no. no. A cup of tea. No. Oh, tea! Uh, of course, yes. <laughs> Mortimer! Pot of tea on the double. Where from, sir? Don't you take that attitude with me, laddie. Go to my office and talk to Miss Spurway, and I'll cut along. And don't boggle at Miss Purcell's legs in that manner, you're not touch. It's all right, Sam. Uh, well, I'll let you get on, Miss Cochrane. I, I must say what an honor it is for us to have you here today. Well, I suppose it must be. Uh, are you sure you don't mind being supplanted as main speaker by Mr. Purcell? Oh, no, to tell you the truth, that is a weight off my mind. It leaves me to concentrate on what I do best. Yes. So, having looked back at the last 200 years... Which is about how long he's been going on. We must always hold in the forefront of our minds the truth that it is upon the foundation of our traditions that we must build for the centuries ahead. For, in a changing and a tawdry world, we must remain steadfast and sturdy. On behalf of the school, its parents and all boys, I should like to thank Mr. Purcell for his stirring address. And now we will all stand for the singing of the school song. Yeoman of trust and steadfast and sturdy. No, 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 no. Mr. Purcell, the, the new school song. New? What are you blithering about, Piddly? Oh, I see. 
going on. I should have thought that was perfectly Take obvious, but... I dare you. Jumped up Barnsley, bedwetter. My poor school. Brothers be brave. Tomorrow we will save. Family angles. Group us all together. But can they? thoroughly to humiliate me in front of 650 people when your plan succeeded admirably. I'm sure that was the last thing that Sam Ridley intended. Ridley? He's just a cat's paw. Cochrane's the Svengali behind it all, and you are in his thrall. He's turned you against your own father. Oh, nonsense. Nigel's doing the school a great favour. A favour? Call that tuneless cacophony a favour? Several of the staff were seen to tap their feet. Lily-livered turncoats to a man. Well, now you see why I didn't tell you about the song before. I knew you'd get yourself into a distemper. But isn't my anger justified? The old school song was perfectly serviceable. Yes, but it wasn't commercial. It's a... It's a school song, not a dog food. Give me a single justification for overturning two centuries of tradition. The music room appeal. What? Your 20 pence would hardly have bought a glockenspiel hammer. Nigel's making the new school song into a record. That pure old and donating all the proceeds to the appeal fund if it's a hit your old school will make thousands I suppose you want to be a school governor oh no daddy why not well they offered him that but he turned it down I suppose he hadn't got a suit how did you guess would you like a cup of tea I don't feel very well <laughs>